I thought I would talk about it a little bit. As I do. I do frequently like to play magic stuff. There's a few cool cards in I think what was it called? I forgot the name of it. Prismari. Which sounds super, super, like, pretty. I think I stopped off, last time I did a review, I stopped off, I think, with Illustrious Historian. So we're just going to talk about some of the cool cards I thought would be cool. Uh, first few cards is, like, Flame Scroll Celebrant and Rebel in Silence. I think this is a pretty sweet hate bear. 2-1, aggressively statted. It's fire breathing ability. Gives you plus 2, plus 0 oh, instead of plus 1, I think. Which is, I think, mostly common for that sort of thing. The Revel and Silence piece, also super cool. Because Revel and Silence and EDH, usually you'll go for like a two mana silence. We see like counters being played. This is essentially like a counter at that point. Gosh, this, I must sound like a nerd to you, Trinity. <laughs> um, but hey, I I'm a nerd. Okay, so yeah, so Rebel, this card is sweet. This card is cool. We also have Cody Phosphorus Codex. <laughs> okay, this is like such a like a meme name. It's like a walking book. You, I guess you would sort of expect this out of this kind of set, Strixhaven, like a, a magic college set. You sort of expect a walking book. You can't cast permanent spells for three mana. Tap for five when you cast your next spell this turn. Exile top card to your library until you exile and center sorcery card. Lesser mana value until then a turn. We cast that card without paying its mana cost for each card. Exile this in your library. One four. This is the card you want to play in like a Zedru deck. I don't think you actually want this as a commander, but it's neat. You can't cast permanent spells. You just play like so instant sorcery tribal. Seems kind of rough. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know about that that, that card. We did get a sneak peek in some of the, what are they called? The Prismari? Wait, wait, let me just put some music on, I think. Put some, uh, nerds are awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you think so. I, I hope they are, but if they're not, I'm totally fine with being sub awesome. Where's my, my nerds at? I forgot that what was this like an actual magma opus? That's the name of something, right? Like this one says it's like their magma opus. Oh, their great work. Okay, that's an interesting name for a card. Magma opus. Deal four damage divided to choose among any number of targets. Tap two target permanents. Create four four blue red elemental creature token. Draw two cards. Is that worth it? Four mana usually. Comes for or two mana and red. Tapping two target permanents. That's two mana and white usually, so that's four mana there. Creating a 4 4 elemental. That's about two mana. Drawing two cards. It's about three mana. So you're getting your mana's worth. <laughs> Magma Opus passes the, the value test. That's fine. I think this is a fine card. I don't think it's. In a pinch, you can make some mana out of it for two mana, play on end step. Pretty cool. Pretty neato bonito. Also, might I add, the combat professor? Looking pretty sweet. He's like a fighting owl. <laughs> Wait a minute. He looks cool. He's got like a bunch of scroll. Is he an angel? No, no, those are just wings. Owl wings. Before Yovis was cut down at Pratinical Peak, she performed which maneuver? Anyone from the reading? I don't know. The flavor text kind of. I don't know about the flavor text. But I love the artwork for this. Who is this? Oh gosh. The artist's name is so small. It's actually really blurry here. But, uh, that art. I super like the yellow, red, white color palette. It looks amazing. Also, that sword. Jeez. That is a bright sword. And we have some other cards. There wasn't too many that I thought were particularly interesting. I think this one was interesting, and this one? Let's read into those. Expression of repetition. Is that alliteration? 
No, it's not. It's gotta have like the the triple first character thing, right? Blue and a red sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand at one of the bottom of your library. Then exile the rest until end of turn. You may play the exiled card. Ooh, that's draw two for two mana. That's pretty nice. I think this is equivalent to light up the stage. I think if you're playing, is it? You probably want to play this in your EDH decks. Maybe even play this in standard. That's a lot of good value. And you don't get like this weird brainstorm lock thing that usually happens. The blue and red art. I don't know why blue and red seem to be like the opposites of each other. They're not really, are they? Maybe they are. Usually you see like black with red and blue with white. I don't know. Art is pretty fancy too. He's like, they're like battling with their illusions or something. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Expressive artist. He's he's riding a lava cat. <laughs> Orc wizard. That's a that's some busy art here. Magecraft. Whenever you cast, copy, instant or sorcery, target creature you control. Target creature you control. Until then, turn it. That leaves the battlefield. Exile it. Instead of putting it anywhere else, whenever you exile this creature, create a 4 4 red elemental 4 4. So it just makes a bunch of big boys for 4 mana. Unless you're playing like some cool, like, crazy copy deck, this is probably not worth it for 4 mana. It's a nice beater. But maybe you can do something better with that. If you're playing, like, Teamer, Teamer copy shenanigans, Expressive Artist, probably where are you going? Like, this is, this would be very nice. I think you'd like have a huge board insanely quick. <laughs> like, what's that one? What's that one commander? I forgot the name of it. Oh, Riku, Riku, Riku of two reflections. If you have Riku with this, how bananas can you make your board? Probably pretty, pretty bonkers. I think that'd be pretty cool. A bunch of orcs just riding out to war. Yeah, that's pretty fancy. Creative outburst. This better be good. Seven mana? Instant creator outburst deals five damage any target. Look at the top five of your library, put one of them into your hand or some bottom library order. Whoa, that is not where I want to go with this. Five mana to one target. That's probably three mana. Then you look at the top five. And you put one into your hand. I'm pretty sure it's like five mana tops. Probably not worth worth talking about. Solve the equation. This is a tutor for instance or sorceries in blue. This is probably gonna play in EDH and maybe even in standard. I know there are a lot of like even like the um, Enchantment Tutor is being played, so this is probably being played. Also, can I even, like explain how cool this picture is? Like this girl, and she's like just studying, and she's just like, "Oh, I found it!" Like I solved it. Like that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. Zinlin's brilliance drew attention from many, including the sinister mages known as the Orig. Did we see Orig somewhere? Oh no, no Orig might be up somewhere. Known as the Orig, sinister mages known as the Orig. Okay, maybe we haven't got to that yet. Next up is one of the personal favorites. I think this is drawing from like, I think Buddhist mythos or something like that. And that's definitely like a Buddhist thing where it's like six arms and they're very symmetrical. Is that a Buddhist thing? I think so. The interesting part is the front side which is the five mana creature avatar with whenever you an opponent casts an instant or sorcery, you may pay two. They may pay two if they don't, you copy it. That's just card advantage in colorless, which we could always have more of. Although I'm incredibly frightened of like cosmic decks because I always lose against them. <laughs> I like the pictures. Yeah, the pictures are pretty, pretty sweet. I really do like the magic um, artwork, majority of it. Actually, my background is just a land for magic. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. The colors and everything. Hey, if you really like magic art, you can go to, I think it's like Art of MTG. Let's see. I think that's the website. That's where I get my Art of MTG. That's where I get a lot of my artwork from. At least for like some of my thumbnails, my backgrounds. They've got like a lot of MTG art, which is cool because MTG hires a lot of different artists. So you can see a bunch of like cool artwork. If you're into artwork at all, 
like you can draw a lot of inspiration from like a bunch of stuff because it's like fantasy and you see like everything from like fantastical birds to like amazing rivers yeah, yeah. art of mtg.com yeah check it out it looks it's, pr it's a pretty sweet, sweet place so yeah wandering archaic i have no clue what this avatar is supposed to B is it like a dog is it like an eldrazi i don't know but i think it's cool to play i wish it was legendary that we could play as your commander but having it at five mana means you can probably mana crypt this or mana vault this pretty early which would be cool it stops people from playing instants or sorceries maybe if you have a kill spell pointed towards it it's probably not the best but you can get a lot of value from this probably you have to say would you pay the two <laughs> Which is, you know, iconic, of course. Galazeth Prismari. She looks feisty. Creature treasure token artifacts you control have tap add mana of any color. You just only cast up troops and spells. So this is a mana rock. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, it's dope. Definitely, definitely gonna have a look. I don't think this card is too good maybe when you're like this is weird because you want to play artifacts but you also want to play instants and sorceries but if you don't have your commander you're probably actually no, you're probably fine if you have your commander because you're playing a bunch of mana rocks and some non-mana rocks some non-mana artifacts okay okay i think she might be pretty fine okay okay one of my favorite ones that I also saw was multiple choice. This card is pretty cool because essentially you can make X zero and you don't get anything from it. But also if you make X four more, you do all the above, which is a lot of value but at sorcery speed. So maybe it's not worth it, but you scry one. If X is one, then draw a card. If X is two, return target creature to its owner's hand. If X is three, create a four, four. So if you pay this for five, does it pass the mana test? So scry one, draw a card, that's worth one mana. Return a creature to its owner's hand, that's worth one mana. Create a 4-4. Four, four. That's three mana. So it just passes the passes the test. <laughs> Ironically enough, it passes its own test. Well, the, uh, the test I made up. Card is fine. Card is fine, fine, fine. Uh, that we have... Okay, I think this is like coming up to finish soon. We got a few more cards here. We have Extus Auric Overlord. So Auric is, I think, some sort of faction in Strixhaven. They're probably some evil demonic faction that wants to enslave the, the children of the school. I don't know why, but apparently that's the Dark Mage that Solve the Equation is talking about, known as the Auric. And Extus is the Auric Overlord. Which, ironically enough, he makes a demon, a blood avatar demon. So, there's some lore for you. <laughs> he seems pretty cool, though. Is he? Four mana. What does he do? Legendary creature, human war warlock for four mana. Double strike. Whenever you cast a copy and instant source spell, return target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand to four. Okay. Okay. So, you want to be sacrificing a lot of stuff to get him back. Then awaken cast awaken the blood avatar, which is some freaky crazy demon, dude. The guy looks like he will like eat everyone. <laughs> As initial cost, pay two. This skill costs two less for any creature paid for its additional cost. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Create a three six black red avatar creature token with one of his creature attacks. They'll damage each opponent. That'll be spicy as a multiplayer card, but honestly, if you're playing this in, in your command zone, you probably want to be casting the front half. Like, having the token die after paying, like, 1,200 mana for it, you're going to feel real bad. And is Exodus worth playing by himself? Whenever you cast a copy of the sorcery card, return target the non creature card from your your hand. Probably. It's probably worth playing. This card's probably fine by itself. Probably high power and blow i'm pretty sure you can do some fancy shenanigans with this it's definitely a value value guy here literally just cast a kill spell get a creature back that demon dude will smash all your bones yeah he will 
He's got an axe in one hand, and he's got like a crazy, pointy, weird looking sword in the other. Like, <laughs> the sword's, got, it's like split in half too. Right. Next up, we have Dominia Siniestro, which I have no clue if I'm saying that right. Sinister Dominance. Okay, that's probably the Spanish translation. So, for three and a black instant, you may pay one a black instead of playing a spell's mana cost. If you pay one a black, an opponent may draw a card, exile target creature, or planeswalker. This is some premium removal. This is definitely getting played. Nothing to say about this. You probably play this in every format. It's good. <laughs> this is a good card. Gosh, I wish white could do this a little better, but black has been steadily getting a lot more e exile effects, and this is just a testament how strong like black is over white. This is a card you play in every... Every deck that you can. Every deck. Mark my words. Get that as soon as possible, boys. Boys and girls. Clever Luminancer. I think this is going to be good in like a lot of white red burn decks in modern. But other than that, I don't know where else you play this. Maybe it becomes like a nice um, aggro card in like a Boros deck. Then we have... Okay, yeah. We just have two more rows left. One. There's like one more. Two more actually I want to talk about, which the last one I haven't even seen yet. <laughs> Cultivate a culmination of studies. X and blue, red. Exile top X cards of your library. For each land card, exile this way. Create a treasure token. For each blue card, exile this way. Draw a card. For each red card, exile this way. Culmination of studies deals one damage to each opponent. So let's do the math. Do the math. So one in a blue by itself is probably worth one, one and a half cards. So you need to be hitting at least two blue off this to be worth let's see exile top let's say you hit like five blue cards you're just drawing five blue after exiling them it's probably not worth playing this because you, you probably end up exiling a bunch of combo pieces and win conditions but wait a minute that's the blood avatar wait that's actually the demon that's the demon that's on this card whale's Quick thinking meshed with Rowan's raw power to bring down the blood avatar. Okay, that's, yeah, that's the blood avatar. That's the demon dude. You can see his axe and his sword there. Cool. But yeah, mechanically, this card, I don't think it's worth it because you're probably going to exile some stuff you want. But it's probably good, uh, on average, good, like, worth of mana value. Resculpt. This is a color bend, color break. Not much to say about it. This is the last one they were printing, Marrow said. But you probably, if you are looking for removal in mono blue, you probably want to play this in mid power, mid power blow. We got Teachings of the Archaics. Arguably should be a white card. Sorcery is also a lesson. If an opponent has more hands than you, more cards in hand than you, draw two cards, draw three cards instead. If an opponent has at least four more cards in hand than you, hmm, probably should have been a white card. But also, if like your opponent is doing better than you, you just you try to do better than you by better than them. So if your opponent's being more blue than you, you be more blue than them, and you win. Okay, got it, wizards. Got it. Okay, last card, Verdant Mastery. This is it looks like it's gonna be a cycle, which I'm psyched for. That is, Sinister Dominance is part of the cycle with Verdant Mastery. So you may pay three and a green rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Search your library for four basic land cards, rebuild them, put one of them into your battlefield tapped. If three and a green was paid, put two of them into battlefield tap and the rest of them in your hand. Oh wow. Four mana. Put two lands on the battlefield. Two basic lands on the battlefield, two in your hand. That's value. Wait, put them under an opponent. Oh, put two of them into the battlefield under. Put one of them into battle under your opponent's control. Okay. So you put two in, you get one in your hand, and your opponent gets one. If you pay it for three. I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it, but... That's that's it for, for that. There's some pretty decent cards. I will say some of the cards that I'm personally looking forward to is going to be... Wandering Archaic. And... Probably Cody. Cody the Vosphorus Codex. That's probably a cute little thing to look forward to. But yeah. Uh, tell me what you guys think about this. But yeah, those are some interesting cards. Anyways, let's get 